Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is a quick training guide for Orbit GCS, the gauge computer software that is built to run the Solartron Metrology Orbit network. Before we get started, just a few things. Uh, first, you will want to make sure that you have downloaded and installed the latest Solartron Orbit 3 support pack that is on the URL you see on your screen. Um, in addition, Orbit GCS functions best on Microsoft Windows 10 either 32-bit or 64-bit. Um, GCS will likely function on other versions of Windows, however, it has been tried and tested on Windows 10. Please note, we'll, we will be discussing items for three main versions of GCS. The baseline version, which is free, that runs five orbit modules and one orbit interface module. Then, the, then there is the registered version, which is also free. You just have to register it on the Solartron website. Um, this includes data logging and runs a higher number of orbit modules. Then there is Upgrade Package 1, where you build your own math formulas. You can run up to 20 orbit networks and then save up to 1,000 parts or projects. There is also a Mastering Upgrade Package and an SPC Upgrade Package available. Those will be discussed at a later time. So the first step, of course, is to connect your orbit stack to the PC. Now, when you first open Orbit GCS, you will have a blank screen like this. This is the main gauging screen. Your first step will be to click Menu in the lower right-hand side. That will take you to the System screen. And here you have uh, just some basics, such as setting up operators and supervisor. Uh, there's license information. Um, for example, a license manager, if you decide to upgrade. And there, are also, there is also backup and restore. Uh, the first button you want to click is Hardware. Here's where you set up the software with your Orbit stack. Your first step is click Connect. Then the software will find any interface modules that is connected to your computer. So as you can see, it has found a USB interface module, and then the serial number there will match the serial number that is on your module. Next step is click Find All Modules, and then that will find all the modules on the Orbit stack. So now for here, we have two, two digital probe modules connected. By default, their name will be their serial number. This is actually something you can change. Just double click here. And for this case, we're just gonna call this one DP1. And as you can see, you can do a module reading. Uh, you will see the device type, those types of things. Close. And then this one, we will call DP2. Hit close. Now, if you have also connected to uh, third-party modules, such as the um, analog interface module or the wireless interface module, um, those will also be listed here. And then when you double click on those, you will be able to change the settings for those modules as well. Um, now, the easiest thing to do, if you just want to see readings for the probes, is just click here, create dimensions. Click for all modules, click save. So now if you go back to the gauging screen, you will now have uh, DP1 and DP2 and the readings for the probes listed right there. But if you want to further work on these dimensions, you go to the dimension button under the system screen. Here you will have dimensions listed for DP1 and DP2. Um, and here you can also change or perhaps add if you want to add include warning limits or fail limits. So for example, on DP1, let's do a warning limit of 0 0.25 minus 0 0.25, fail limit 0.5 minus 0 0.5. Then up here is where you can change the scaling um, on the gauging screen. So right now this is 0 to 2 because this was a 2 millimeter probe. You can make this 4 or 1. So for example, here we can change it to one and minus one. Now, if you wish to do, for example, an NA plus B dimension or some other type of uh, formula, uh, your next step of what you want to do is click add dimension. And we'll just name this A plus, a plus B. Then you go to here, set formula. Now, the list of formulas that you see here are loaded onto Orbit GCS by default. Um, we will show you how to add a formula in a second, but for right now, we're just going to click A plus B 
click select. Then of course you want to identify what is going to be channel A, what is going to be channel B. For here you click set parameters, DP1, we'll just make that A, DP2, we'll make that B. If you'll note too, you have some other tabs here, dimension values, dimension logic, if you're using logic, as well as DIOM inputs, if you are using the digital input output module. So we'll just click back. For here, of course, we probably want to set some parameters, make it two to minus two, set up some warning limits, make sure they are enabled. Click enabled, click save. Now, if you wish to add your own formula, you can click the formula button here. And again, this is available on Upgrade Package 1. What you can do is click New. And now, create your own math formula. So for example, let's just say we're doing flatness. We'll name it flatness. And we'll say that is max. And we'll put A, B, And then there we go. C min of points A, B, and C. Now I would like to point out if the formula isn't proper, it will just say invalid in the upper right hand corner. And if the formula is proper, it will say numeric. You will only be able to save the formula if this is in the green. So once this is set, click save. Now if we go back to dimensions and click set formula, you'll see that flatness, the formula we just created is right there. We'll just click cancel for now. So the next step is then to go to parts. And this is where you can set up the controls for the gauging screen. So for example, ABS, zero and preset. Uh, right now we'll just leave those on, but you'll also see how there's a soft key setup. What these are for are actually the buttons. We'll go back to the gauge screen these four buttons on the right hand side. And if you have a touch screen, these will just act as virtual buttons on your screen. So to set these up, we'll go back to menu and parts. So soft key one, which is of course the top one, let's say you wanna start your data logging. Soft key two, stop your data logging. And again, you can choose any one of these. If you wanna trigger a sample or trigger a reading right there on the screen, there's trigger sample and soft key four, you can do like say zero all dimensions. You have multiple options there. Um, you also have options for preset type, um, saving zero and preset the disk. Your next step here is for logging. Now again, this is for the registered version. You know, right now we have log mode set to none. Let's just make it continuous. Here is where you can set the file path of where you want to save it on your computer, which you want to save it as, like let's say we'll save it as Solartron. Uh, prompt for file name. You also have the option for batch data. You have the option to enter a serial number. In addition, for if you wish to have a keyboard key trigger, you can do for space an interval timer trigger. Also, if you have a foot switch or a button that you wish to press to trigger a reading, this is where you would use the logic DIOMs or others. Then your next setting is for this, the gauging screen itself. Um, the absence of how many vertical bars or horizontal bars uh, you want to see on the screen. You can actually go to quite a high number. Right now we'll set this down to four uh, for this one. And then lastly, you have view logs. So anytime you have saved some data, this is where you can go back and then actually view the data, you know, in the software. Um, in addition, you whatever file you have saved, you can open that file and then just view it in Excel. Click close. And then here's where you have the options for mastering and SBC. These will be discussed at a later time. So once we are all set, click save. And now go to gauge. So now if you'll see, we have DP1 and DP2, and then A plus B. And down in the lower left-hand corner, you have start log. Then you have your soft keys on the right-hand side here. So actually, I'm just going to click start log real quick. Go file name Solartron. Click Start. Next, I'm just going to make a couple of readings. And if you'll note, under the logging function, it flashes green every time 
a reading is made. Now, one neat little trick is if you click one of the gauge bars themselves, if you'll see, it's actually given you kind of a pseudo control chart showing you the limits and then showing, you know, the trend on the readings. This is just a nice little visual if you want to see and you have a print option as well. Also, you have options along the bottom for absolute all, zero all, uh, preset all, clear peak all. And then if you click set display, that's where it'll change it to horizontal bars. And if you click set display again, it will show just the particular readings. Click stop log. Now, another feature too, is if you wish to run more than one part on this software package, you have that option as well. So you can go to menu, go to parts. If you see up here, parts, there's already a list of parts that have been created with the software package. You just go to new, uh, save changes to the current part setting. Yes, absolutely. We'll just call this part 10, click enter. So now you have an all new screen where if you want to do part 10 or whatever name you want to do, then you can go through the setup process again. Now, if you want to go back to part nine, just go back to menu, go to parts, parts. We are on part nine, click open. And we were back to where before where we were before. So this concludes the brief training session for this video. Again, if you do have questions, please contact your local Solartron representative. Thank you and have a good day.